You really don't need an easy mode. Remember back in the day when every game was literally hard as fuck? It didn't matter what you were playing. Every single game was designed to beat you down and kick sand in your eyes while you were struggling to get back up. Even games that were clearly aimed at kids like The Lion King and Aladdin. These games knew how to mess your shit up so bad that I can guarantee most of you watching never beat them or even attempted them out of just straight up fear. There were games like Battletoads, a game so hard that it's basically the Dark Souls of side-scrolling brawlers, or Mike Tyson's Punch-Up, which is basically the Sekiro of Mike Tyson. I wish one of your guys had children so I could kick them in the fucking head or stomp on their testicles. Huh? Over the years, though, as more and more people got their hands on games, the difficulty level began to drop considerably, with many adding multiple difficulty options for you to play the game as you see fit, or just straight up making games easier so more people can play without feeling frustrated or challenged. And while there are some games that urge you to consider the more challenging difficulty option, as that's the developer's intended vision, some have removed all obstacles and are just so mind-numbingly easy that they're basically made for newborn babies. But I get it, games are expensive to make, so of course it makes the most sense to have your game be accessible to the most amount of people possible because the more people that can potentially play your game means the more people that can buy it, which means the more money you can make. And this is a cash business, baby. Money. I mean, look at Fortnite and the amount of skins they sell. They hook you in on the wins, but maybe not everyone is good enough to win. So what do you do? I don't know. You pump the game with bots so that even the worst players can get a victory royale and celebrate by spending some V-Bucks in the shop. Nice. Most games have become so goddamn easy that people have forgotten what an actual challenge is. And when they come face to face with one, all they do is quit. I don't want to relax mode. I just want to chill on my couch. I play games to have fun and not be challenged. I get that you're a and you're afraid of facing anything difficult. You're also the main reason why if we look at one of the more difficult games around today, Cuphead, we can see that less than 50% of players even got past the second world because they just straight up quit the game. And it all comes down to players today just absolutely refuse to get good. And that's fine if you're a little bitch, no offense. But there's one company that doesn't give a single motherfucking shit about your crying and begging for added difficulty options. And that company is from someone. From Software has created some of the most challenging games in modern gaming, from Demon Souls to Dark Souls 1 to Bloodborne to Sekiro, and most recently Elden Ring and Armored Core. All of these games have been filled with incredible boss battles, stunning locations, and just pure gratification from overcoming the most difficult of challenges. And you're missing out. Why is that? Because you just won't get good. You won't allow yourself to be frustrated, you won't put in the time to get better and beat the boss and continue through the game. Because really, these games aren't all that difficult. I mean, of course they're hard, but they just really require you to play them how they want to be played. There's a subtle art to getting good, and if you allow it, these games will teach you everything you need to know to beat everything that comes your way. And it all starts with the way these games introduce you to the difficulty. If we go back all the way to Demon's Souls, which was remade on PS5, and my god it's good, we are shown right at the very beginning that this is a game where you will face challenges that will be far too difficult for you to overcome, and will actually destroy you and make you cry and probably want to quit. But that's okay, because even though it's hard now, you're gonna learn and you're gonna get better, and by the time you face this guy again, he's gonna feel like such a little bitch that you're gonna think you are a pussy for not killing him the first time around. Because what they do so perfectly is instill in you the concept of death equals growth. Every single time you die, and even though it sucks when that happens, you get a tiny bit better because you learn and adapt. You realize the mistake that got you killed and you change your approach. Maybe you dive instead of dodge. Maybe you attack instead of running away. But you do things differently. You don't even realize it's happening, but there's a subtle shift in the way you approach your enemy. And every single time you're forced to repeat one of these encounters, you shift again. Again and again and again. Until you win. And that leads me to Dark Souls 3, which I think does an amazing job of presenting the fundamentals of getting good. Pretty much right at the beginning of the game, you come face to face with Udex Gundyr, a towering figure of unstoppable might. Your first real test of the game. Can you adapt and play it like it wants you to play? Or are you gonna just keep swinging away like a moron and hope that one day you'll get one shot for no reason even though there's a 0% chance of that happening? He might seem like an unbeatable enemy, especially this early on, but he's actually a cuck. And if you just focus for a single goddamn second and stop trying to rush in like you're Kratos, you'd beat him and continue on through one of the greatest games of all time. Or you end up like the 40% of people who gave up at the first real boss, who couldn't handle the art of getting good. But I get it, it's not easy and it shouldn't be. You should feel like you're accomplishing something, that you're always at risk of dying, and that your mistakes actually matter. If everything had no consequences, then you might as well just go back to playing, I don't know, Genshin Impact or some shit. 
But okay, maybe Dark Souls 3 isn't your jam and you'd rather jump in with Elden Ring because you like the open world approach to the gameplay. And that's fine, but you're gonna have to get good there too. Except they let you get good a little bit differently. At the very beginning of Elden Ring, you step out into this massive world and are greeted by this fucker on a horse. He looks like someone you probably want to stay away from, but you're not a pussy, so you go fight him anyway. And then this happens. What this teaches you is that there are enemies in this game that will absolutely annihilate you, and it's probably best to stay away from them until you're ready. In Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, Bloodborne, and Sekiro, you'd be fighting this guy until you're beaten. But not in Elden Ring. No, no, no. Elden Ring gives you the opportunity to get good in whatever way you see fit because you're given more freedom to learn from your mistakes by taking on other challenges and getting better and improving your playstyle and then coming back to kick this guy's ass when you're ready which is the direct opposite of Sekiro. We're 20 minutes or so into the game, you're put face to face with this guy, your first actual barrier in the game. Except here you don't have options. You can't use a different weapon that you like more or try using magic or anything really. You have your katana and you have to use it exactly how they want you to use it, through a precise dance of parrying and striking, perfectly timing everything from the start of the fight to the end. This game is subtly forcing you to get good, to drop whatever BS idea you got of how the game works going in and just give in to what the game is trying to teach you. And honestly, it's perfect. And yet most people will miss out on this incredible game because they're completely unwilling to adapt to what the game demands. But it wants you to understand. It wants you to get good. And the only way to experience these amazing games is to be open to that challenge, to get past the frustration, to learn from your mistakes, to take advantage of your enemy's weaknesses and just fucking get good. I know it's difficult, but it's not impossible. You just have to try. Listen, not having difficulty options isn't the devs being unfair to you. It's the devs forcing you to get good because the exact same way that people can pick up a guitar and without knowing anything, become the next Jimi Hendrix by watching a few YouTube tutorials. You can go from being a goofer to doing a no hit challenge in no time. You just have to try and accept the mechanics to read your enemy, attack the openings, dodge everything that comes your way and repeat the process until the boss is dead and you stand over its mutilated corpse laughing maniacally as you realize this one single effort took you over 200 attempts over 10 continuous hours of gameplay just so you can say that you two killed Melania Blade Amicola. You see, so when it really comes down to it, you actually don't need an easy mode. All you have to do is really just give in to the game. Give it the time it needs. Give yourself the time you need to get better, to improve, and to actually beat the challenges that are coming your way. I didn't give up in Liza P after the King of Puppets killed me 500 times. I didn't give up in Armored Core after I died those dozens of times against that one boss that was really annoying. I kept going. And yeah, sure, maybe it's hard and maybe you're frustrated and you just wanna lie back and have an easy time. And that's fine for some people, but you shouldn't just give up at first. You gotta keep going. But maybe you don't care. Maybe that means nothing to you and you're all like, oh my God, like, can we talk about like the political and economic state of the world right now? No, you fucking pussy. So shut the hell up and get good, bitch. Ooh.